Hello, and welcome to Chris's Ticks. Today we'll be having a look at another Timex. Surprise! This time, the Timex M79 Dive Style Watch. And before we get started, I just wanted to say that just like my other Timexes, I purchased this with my own cash money, so it's not a sponsored review. Now, let's get into the watch. First, let's have a quick look at the M79's story from Timex. I'll link to their blog post below, but essentially, it is a mechanical version of their Quartz reissue, which is based on a watch from the 70s, or rather a set of watches from the 70s. So deep. Luckily, I have one of the original Q Quartz watches that these reissues are inspired by, so let's compare the two. Now let's flip the camera. The original Q Quartz series are an interesting beast. Nothing like the new reissue that uses a conventional quartz module. The original one shown here uses a movement that is basically the Timex electric movement with a quartz regulator controlling the balance. Super strange. If you want to know more about the electric movements, I've made a video about them and I'll link to that down below. On to the box. Actually, no. I'm going to skip this one this time. We've already reviewed a couple Timexes that I've purchased and they all came in the same box. So we don't need to pad the runtime with this, right? If you really got to know, it's a long black box and it's pretty nice, but that's really all it is. Let's do a side-by-side -side with the original Q Quartz. The M79, as stated in their blog, is a bit bigger than the Q reissue, which is a mostly spot-on reproduction of the original. It measures in at about 40 millimeters, too bigger than the reissue. The slightly bigger size is fairly nice. It's interesting to note that the crystal size basically remains the same. The bezel expands out, and I think it looks great. Now, looking at the back, we have the display case back. I'm a bit torn about the case back since it's not a super nice movement, but it seems that all of the mechanical Timexes like to use it. And on the inside, it's using a Miyota. I'll get into that later. Honestly though, I would have preferred a solid case back, but this isn't bad. The case. I really like the use of the vintage design. The finishing on it is also fairly good for the price point. It's generally polished everywhere, and where the chamfers are, it's brushed. The crown signed with the letters TX is also a nice touch. You may have noticed though that at the start of the video I said it's a diver style. And that's because the case's water resistance is a paltry 50 meters. Which in part is probably attributed to the regular push-pull crown. No screw down crowns found here. And that is too bad given its excellent looks. But it doesn't bug me that much as I probably won't ever have this near any large bodies of water anyways. That being said, this is a word of warning for anyone that actually wants to do swims with this thing. Now, let's listen to some bezel action. Oh yeah, that's a pretty good sound. I should bring up though, I'm not a dive watch expert, so I'm not sure how to really characterize this. The clicks are distinct, and the bezel is lined up, so that's pretty nice. Additionally, there's not any backplay in the bezel, so extra bonus, I suppose. Taking this into account, it is a step up from the original bezel on the original version of the Q-Quartz divers, which are just a friction fit. The new M79 also uses a metal bezel, which again is a step up from the vintage model, which uses a plastic one. Time to have a look at the included band. Firstly, it's 18mm, so that's nice, a good common number. It's cheap and easy to adjust, as shown here. That being said, I do find it fairly comfortable, and it doesn't really pull hairs. At least not mine, and I personally think that it matches up very well with the look of the watch. Let's have a look at this compared to the vintage Timex strap, and I can honestly say the new one is much better. I like the look of the new one more, and I like the feel of it more. On top of that, the vintage one does actually pull hair, so that's no fun. The watch crystal. It's acrylic, which is understandable. I am personally a huge fan of the super domed acrylic crystal and the look that it gives. It just shouts vintage. 
Given the price, a super curved sapphire might have been a bit too much to expect, and I'm glad that they didn't go with a curved mineral crystal. At least the acrylic is polishable if it does get dinged. Time for a loom test. For this test, we'll pit the M79 against the Seiko Mini Turtle, the Seiko 5KX, and an AliExpress watch from Addy's Dive. I'll hit all the watches with the UV bulb for about 30 seconds and then cut the lights. The camera is set to 1 15th shutter at f2.8 ISO 3200 when we're shooting the loom. Let's see which one sticks it out the longest. The two Seikos took first, unsurprisingly. The Adi Stive then took second, and dead last is the Timex M79. That isn't entirely surprising. The marketing blurb doesn't mention any fancy loom, just that there is some. Deeper into the watch, we find the ever popular Miyota 8215 again. Just in case you don't already know, it's made in Japan, has 21 joules, it's a unidirectional automatic, and it beats at 21,800 beats per hour. Power reserve is 42 hours, it hand winds but doesn't hack, and it's good for minus 20 seconds plus 40 seconds a day. My M79 seems to be doing okay at plus 18 seconds a day face up. This is a big step up from their quartz module on both the Q quartz reissue and the original vintage version. That being said, I do really love the original vintage movement. It's just so very funky. Back to the watch in question. While this 8215 is cleaner than the one in my Marlin, literally, the same comments about the movement exist in this video. The rotor is loud and there isn't much to look at even though this watch comes with a display case back. Time to talk cash money. The watch comes in at $329.99 to $359.99 Canadian depending on the colorway. Or apparently $279.99 USD. Apparently colorways are the same price in America land. To me, this MSRP is better value than the 40mm Marlin, but I still wouldn't buy it at MSRP. This is because, just like other things on the Timex website, they routinely go on sale, either at the website or at any other big box retailer. I got mine at the Bay. After discount, it came up to around $230 plus tax, so $50,000. A much better price. So be patient and a sale will come. At a sale price, the little misgivings about the movement and the vintage tax is forgiven. Let's consider that the Marlin Automatic has an MSRP of close to that price, and personally, I like this M79 way more. For me, the Marlin is just too big. At this price point, there's also some pretty stiff competition. I'm not going to count all the watches from AliExpress, because then we'd be here all day, given the enormous amount of homage dive watches on there. However, from other, more conventional brands, the biggest competition I can think of would be the 5KX. They can be had for similar money and offer better water resistance at 100 meters. Orient also comes to mind with the Orient Mako 2 selling at roughly $210 Canadian on Amazon and the Ray 2 for $190 on Amazon. However, these options are all bigger than the M79, so if you're after a smaller looking watch, then stick with the M79. Otherwise, if bigger is okay, have a really good look at the Orient as it is offering up 200 meters of water resistance. That's some reasonable waterproofing. I almost forgot, there's one more option as well for similar alternative watches. An original vintage Q Quartz Diver. There are a couple things to look out for if you do want one. With the reissue being a pretty big hit, vintage prices have kind of climbed up a bit. All the ones that I've spotted on eBay are kind of close to the price point of the reissue. Whether or not they're actually moving any units, that's another question. But even scouring through completed sales of vintage Q Quartz watches, there aren't that many that appear to be popping up anymore. And the ones that do sell tend to sell for kind of more than what I'd be comfortable paying. I picked mine up for about $50, but this was before the reissue was released. Additionally, if you do want one of the Vintage Quartz variants, keep in mind that the original Vintage Quartz movement is not really a movement that's commonly serviced by watchmakers, other than people who are specifically familiar with it. Another random niggle about the original Vintage Q Quartz is that the movements don't have quick set day dates, so get ready for some heavy, heavy finger workouts when setting the watch. I think I spent about 10 minutes going between 11 and 2 o'clock on mine just to get the date right for the video. Not that it really matters. 
Last thing to keep in mind if you do want to shop vintage is that they're likely even less waterproof than this reissue and there's no warranty to go with it. Let's finish up by saying this. The Timex M79 vintage inspired watch is probably my favorite Timex that they have out right now. I like this more than both the hand wine and automatic Marlin reissues. That being said, the new Timex Expedition mechanicals look pretty sweet. I do like the vintage inspired design of the watch and its modern build materials. The build quality is good and the minor issues that I do have, such as the use of the Miyota 8215 and the lower water resistance can be forgiven, especially given how good it looks. Really, the biggest thing is the MSRP. As I mentioned before, wait till there's a sale to bring the price down 25 to 35 percent, in which case it becomes a pretty fair buy. Would you consider getting one? Leave a comment below and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you later!